Today I'm going to be showing you on how to safely and properly jump your starter motor if you're having problems with the starting circuit on your vehicle. Welcome back to the Moose Mobile Auto Repair Channel and today I'm going to be showing you on how to how to jump the starter motor. Now if you're having issues in the starting circuit itself and you just want to get the car to start so that you're able to drive it to the repair facility or, or drive it home so you're able to fix it later and then this video is for you. Now if you're trying to figure out to see if the starter is bad, you can either use this test just to test the starter motor itself because you will be isolating the starting circuit completely. So if you have a problem in the starting circuit, this is not a good diagnostic test. This is just use just to get the car to start so you can drive it somewhere if you're having problems but if the starter is completely dead then this test it, it is not going to work now you could diagnose this by using a test light and see if you're getting power to the starter and to check for the the starter ground but other than that i'm going to be using a special uh, device to safely and properly jump the starter motor on this vehicle here. So right now I have a 2009 Pontiac Vibe and this one is equipped with the 2.4 liter engine. This is the same engine that's available on some of the Toyota models such as the Camry, Highlander, the Matrix and so forth. So anyhow I'm going to get started now. So I'm uh, under the hood here. I just removed the air box and the housing here and the mass airflow sensor. And now I have access to the starter motor now. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you're not able to find the starter on your vehicle, it would be placed between the engine and the transmission. So on this vehicle, it's easily accessible here. So I'm just using this vehicle as a test example because it's, it, it, it's easy to get to it. On some vehicles, it may be underneath and hiding somewhere, either somewhere in the front or, or in the middle of the vehicle if the engine is placed in the, in the front of the vehicle on some cars. Uh, the engine it may be in uh, in the back so it depends on your vehicle but on most cars you would either see the starter somewhere underneath in the front or, or in the middle in the back if the transmission is uh, it, it, it is mounted uh, differently it's all going to <laughs> depend on the configuration if the configuration is a, a longitudinal or a transverse or an, an inline engine. So it's all going to be dependent on your vehicle. So I have the remote starter tool here. This is by uh, uh, Innova 3630 remote uh, starter switch. I purchased it on Amazon. I will post the link in the description if you guys uh, want one. So anyhow, uh, the starter is here. This is the, the solenoid of the starter and you have the S terminal here. So I disconnected the switch here. There's a switch that I, I disconnected. So you will need to disconnect the connector for the S terminal and where the switch is. And then you have the, the power, the positive cable that's going, going to the, the positive terminal 
of the battery. So there's two connections here. Uh, I hooked up one to the positive terminal of the battery and one to the S terminal, the starter switch of the, the solenoid. You can either connect this one here to the positive or you can directly connect it uh, over here. Just a word of caution, uh, make sure that uh, if you have an automatic transmission that the vehicle is placed uh, into park. If it's not placed into park, if it's in drive or in uh, <laughs> a reverse, if the engine starts up while the key is in the ignition, the vehicle is, uh, is going to roll. So, so be very careful. Uh, you can either get uh, injured <laughs> or killed. So, so be extremely careful. On modern day vehicles today, uh, the vehicle will not start if the, if the key is not in the ignition, key on, uh, engine off, because the immobilizer prevents the car from starting. In most cases on cars, sometimes if you have the incorrect key, uh, the engine, it, it may crank, but it, it will not start. But on some cars, it will be a, a no crank and no start. It will just will not allow you to, to, to crank the engine over. So in, in order to get this to work, you have to have a, a key that is learned by the uh, uh, immobilizer so that the computer will uh, allow the vehicle to start. So you must place the key in the ignition, uh, key on, engine off. So it should be on the on uh, ignition. So when you uh, press the switch, you will be able to, to start the vehicle. So now I have the switch here. I'm just going to press it. It's just cranking, but it, it, it is not starting because I don't have the key inside the ignition. You will, have the, you will have to have the key inside the ignition for the vehicle to start. So it's just cranking over. I'm, I'm able to jump the starter this way. This is the, the safest way that I know. Some guys, they may use a test light or a screwdriver to jump the terminals it will cause a little bit of a spark but you, you can use a screwdriver uh, as well but this way is the safer way so i'm going to put the ignition to on and make sure the vehicle is placed uh, into park now i highly recommend to place wheel chocks either in the front or the rear of the vehicle just in case so that the vehicle does not roll. This is just for safety purposes. So now I have the ignition on. I'm going to, uh, to jump the starter now. Uh, I do have the mass airflow sensor disconnected so it, it might not uh, it may start and then die but afterwards it'll be able to uh, to start after that so i'm going to to press uh, uh, the button or the trigger here as soon as the engine starts you want to let go of the trigger the car started now So now I'll have to go inside the vehicle to shut the vehicle off. So again, uh, you guys have to make sure that if you want the engine to start, you got to make sure that the ignition is, is on with the, the proper key. Otherwise, the engine will not start. The uh, immobilizer is just going to prevent the vehicle from starting. Now some people they may say oh on, on why can't you jump it th <laughs> through the starter relay because that's faster. Well 
on most vehicles today the manufacturers that they have hid the starter relay somewhere in the vehicle uh, on some of the toyota models now they hide the starter relay behind the dash so you're not able to get access to it so there's no way of actually <laughs> jumping the starter that way because there's no access now on this uh vibe i believe they hide the starter really either behind here somewhere or behind here i'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure but it's somewhere behind the dash so you're not able to to get access to it so that's it for today if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please don't forget to give it a like and please consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day and take care.